we are fixed that uh, open circuit voltage is 70 and voltage in maximum power point is 60 and charge circuit current is 5.1 amps current at maximum power point is 4.2 amps okay and then you ask about the voltage right so here you have to design 60 volt so here you have to design 120 volt right so based upon that this l and this c value can be designed okay so for that we got the design equation so this is a boost number design equation so input voltage is 60 and here you are taking switching frequency is 10 kilohertz the output voltage here we are fixing is 120 and then iot max we are calculating based upon the vmp imp and the output voltage and then here so this is ripple inductor current detail so this is ripple capacity voltage detail so this is l and c value okay and finally we will get, uh, get the r value in the output load side so this is duty cycle so i am going to simulate this one so this is the value of l and c and load resistance and duty cycle okay so the same value we are going to using here this l and c and this input capacitor you have to have around 100 micro okay and then here we are using that incremental conductance MPPT. so for that we are measuring the and the pv measurement here and then uh, here we are going to use only pv voltage and current okay so that will be fed to the incremental conductance MPPT. so here it is known as incremental conductance MPPT. so here we have to fix the initial voltage and maximum voltage and minimum voltage okay so this is going to be fixed based upon the PV character 6. So here I'm going to have right. So here the maximum voltage is around uh, 60 volt, the minimum voltage around 50 volt. So that's why we are taking um, that voltage is more than 60 and the around 52. Okay. So that's why we are fixing here the maximum voltage is 62, minimum voltage is 55. Okay and then this is change in voltage of that uh, of that mean uh, based upon mppt condition we are going to adjust the voltage so this is a change in voltage condition del v right so here we have fixing the different value v volt p volt m volt right and initially you have to fix v volt equal to zero p volt zero i volt zero and then and that change in uh, voltage right will be considered as initial voltage and that means here you have to calculate power and change in voltage change in power change in current so now, now first you have to check the change in voltage if it is zero then you have to check change in current if it is equal to zero then the reference voltage from the output of the inc right should be equal to vr that mean which is equal to initial voltage if suppose if di is greater than zero then you have to decrement the voltage by the amount del v or if di is less than zero you have to increment the voltage by the amount at del v okay if this condition is not true okay if del v is not equal to zero then you have to check this condition di by dv which is equal to minus i minus i will be okay if if this condition is true then you have to make reference voltage which is equal to vr or else if you have to check this condition da by dv is greater than minus i bb if this condition is true then we have to decrement the voltage by del v or we have to increment the voltage by the amount of del v okay so after cal calculating v reference right so next you have to check the condition the v reference is is in between v max and v minimum if it is in between v max minimum no problem you have to take the value directly or else you have to 
take that reference, the previous reference unit. Okay. So after doing this one, you have to change the, the previous reference with the, the current reference, previous voltage with the current voltage, then previous power with the current power and the previous current with the current current. Okay. So this will be keep on executing up to getting the maximum power. Okay. That means the, it will provide the reference voltage. So here we are comparing that reference voltage. Okay, reference voltage with the axial voltage and then process the PA controller. In this PA controller process the PWM generated here 10 kilohertz we are fixing. So it will generate the pulse. Okay. So here we need to tune this. Okay. So already we tuned that model. So we are getting around 0 0.97, 34.6. Okay. Now I'm going to fix one one in default it will be one one. So now I'm going to simulate this model. So for the that means we need to tune this PA controller. So before that, I'm going to simulate this model. We can check the condition whether we are getting maximum power or not. Okay. So for the condition, we are getting the maximum power. So but even though we need to tune accordingly, right? So, so for that, so I'm going to click this one. PA controller and then go to tune, right? Click tune button. So before that, you go to use the fixed load condition. Just you go to fixed load condition and fixed irritation condition. So now I'm going to for tune. Okay. So after clicking tune, so it, it will open this block tuning block, right? So here just go to click this plant and then click identify new plant okay so after clicking identify new plant you will get this window so here you can click get get io data then click simulate data okay so here you have to take offset equal to zero and then uh, here after that i'm going to take point two zero point two okay and then uh, I'm going to change the value from 0.2 to 0.4.6. Okay. So here I'm I'm going to consider I'm going to this 0.4. So I'm going to this 0.4. The offset is 0.2. Then we'll get 0.2. So 0.2 to 0.6 step, right? So we are giving uh, the input to the system is 0.2 to 0.6. So from 0 to 0 0.4 the uh, input to the system will be 0.4 from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 the, the input to the system is 0 0.6 from that we are calculating error in front of the PAD control okay so now i'm going to simulate this model so click simulation so it will be simulate okay so we will see here right so here we are seeing that simulation So it will simulate for two times. So after simulation completion, so you will get this response, right? So next you go to apply and then close. So now I'm going to use this one pole method for uh, identification purpose okay or else you can use different things okay you can use under time to pair everything so uh, i'm going to use under time to pair if click in under time to pair so this is a transit function of this uh, our system k divided by d omega square x square plus g theta d, d omega s plus so we have to tune this uh, system in order to get the k d omega square theta d omega right so for that just go to click auto estimate right so after clicking auto estimate it will identify the plant based upon our our given data so now you can see that so the blue color is identified plant right 
So after that you can see them. So this is a k value of k value, right? K d omega theta for the transfer function. So so this is the transfer function. So for the transfer function, so you will see that so value k d omega theta. Okay. So next you have to apply this one. So after apply, so you will see that so this is the response of the actual system so this is is the that uh, solid line nothing but uh, that uh, tuned response right? so here i'm going to use the value as it is so now you can see that this is the value of kp and ka here so i'm going to use the value as it is and then i'm going to test the model okay so now you can see that it's a value changed here right okay so now i'm going to test the model simulate the system and then check the response So now you can see that the system having some response, right? That we need to have a delay, right? So next time we're going to adjust this one. And then update the block and then check the response. So now we will see that you will get the perfect results, right? So uh, based upon this adjustment, right? This adjustment and this as a response time and the transient time. So we can uh, get the proper response, okay? So uh, if you are get the proper result, right? So you can tune again and again, right? How to get the result proper result and then you can check the detail here right so for different value you will get a different uh, response right so you have to adjust the value accordingly and then you will get the proper result now i'm update the model so this is a final result so we can use this value kp equal to 0.2389 or a equal to 4.78 4 right so this is a tuning of uh, system with uh, the here we are consider plant is the second order plant okay so so this is the value right 0.38 or 4 point something so it will be taken as the final value for kpk so we can use the different plant also so i'm going to use one pro one for plant and then i'm going to use auto estimate so here we are using only one pole for uh, id defining the plant right so now this plant is identified by using that one by four so again auto estimate So now this system is uh, identified. So here you can see that this is the transfer function for a one pole transfer function. So here the value of k is the so this is k and this is t1. Okay. So we can use the, the same concept also. That means we can use this one pole transfer function model and then we can so this is a tuned value. So I'm gonna update this model in the PED tuner. So here you can see the changes changes in the system so this is a response of this tuning right so we can So we can retune that model. Okay. Please wait, it will take time. Okay. 
so this is the way we are um, tuning the model okay so click tune so it will open this model and then go to identification implant and get go to get io data and then you can change here point two and then here we just change this point four and then simulate the model okay so it will simulate the model and uh, identify the data So with this identified data, then you have to click apply and close. And then you can choose any transit function model. So here you can choose under diameter or one fold. So I'm going to click one fold and then click auto estimate. So you can use one pole method or under damped uh, transit function method to identify the data. Okay. So already explained about under damped method. Okay, transit function method. Now I am explaining one pole method. So next after identification, click apply. And then click PAD tuner. Okay. So this is uh, a block response, this is a tuned response. Okay. And now I'm going to update the block and then simulate the model. So you can see the response now. Okay, this is the response. Next, I'm going to tune this model. And update the block and then you can check the response. So you will see that the proper response right so so while updating that value so the value will be updated here right that apk will be updated here, right so you can use that value right next time i'm going to click this okay so so by using this method you can tune and then you will get the, the value of p and t1 right transfer function and also you can choose under time repair and then you can do and then it will get the transit function of that model okay so after tuning right next we go for testing so here i'm going to use the variable resistance sorry variable irradiation concept so every 0.2 second i'm going to change the irradiation from 1.8 0.6 and then you have to check the results So you see here that we are getting maximum power for the radiation condition. Okay. So now I'm going to check the the same system with the constant radiation with the variable load condition. So here I'm going to simulate. So every point three second load will be changed. So because of that, you can see that so PV per extracted at the maximum level. Okay. So you can see the different variation in the PV voltage, boost converter output voltage, PV current, boost converter output current, PV power, boost converter power, right? So it always extracting the maximum power with the change in radiation condition as well as a variable load condition. Okay.